Good morning. It's good to be with you on this uh, wonderful uh, day. I'm so glad that you've taken time to join us together as we continue reading in the book of Acts. Uh, it's uh, great to great to, to be with you as we unpack God's word. Uh, today, we're going to pick up in Acts chapter 21. We'll be in verse 27 um, and read through 36. And thus far in Paul's efforts and ministry, we've seen him um, take all of these missionary journeys, these missionary trips. Uh, today is when things begin to change for Paul. The next, well, the rest of Acts is going to deal with Paul um, in prison to some extent. So uh, we're going to see how this begins to change today. So let's let's read um, Acts 21 through uh, verse 27 through 36. If you just to refresh your memory, uh, we talked Friday of how Paul, uh, while he was under no obligation to do certain things to show the uh, people of Jerusalem that he was um, disregarding the law, um, he did it anyway, just to you know for the good of the community and for good of everybody. So that's kind of where we end up as Paul had gone to the temple and done these things. So that's where that's where we picked up. So verse twenty seven uh, is there. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, who had seen him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd. They seized him, shouting, fellow Israelites, help. This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against our people, our law, and this place. More so than that, he actually has brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously, previously seen Trimothius, the Ephesian, with him in the city. And they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was aroused, and all the people rushed together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. While well, they were trying to kill him, where he came to the tribune of the cohort, that all of Jerusalem was in uproar. Immediately he took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. When they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came, arrested him, and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some of the crowd shouted one thing and some another. And as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought to the barracks. When Paul came to the steps, the violence of the mob was so great that he had to be carried out by the soldiers. The crowd that followed him, the crowd kept following him, shouting, away with him. So remember how last week I kind of said that um, we almost see a little bit of parallel between um. Paul and his resoluteness to go to Jerusalem and Jesus resoluteness to go to Jerusalem. We, we kind of see that mirroring each other in the same way that Peter told Jesus, you know, no Lord, you can't go. And, 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 and Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Last week we saw Paul tell um, different groups, Hey, I've got to go to Jerusalem. And they're like, don't go, don't go. And Paul says, I, you're making me weep. I've got to do what God calls me to do. Now we see Paul in Jerusalem, and now we see that what they all thought was going to happen is beginning to happen. Um, Paul's in the temple. He's doing nothing wrong. He's actually kind of going above and beyond uh, what is expected. Um, he's he's doing things to appease people and to let there be peace and let there be unity. Uh, and it just still kind of spirals. And what's interesting, when I, when I read this, um, of course, you know, it's, it's so interesting when we read the Bible. To see the human stuff and the spiritual stuff. So we can theorize as to why Judas betrayed Jesus. There's a lot of theories. Uh, one of my favorite theories is that Judas and many of the other disciples expected Jesus to be an earthly king. And so when Jesus was refusing to be an earthly king, one of the theories is that what Judas was trying to force his hand. Like Judas wanted Jesus to be king, so he brought the Romans there in hopes that Jesus would start the rebellion. Um, and that's a that's a human explanation. But of course, the Bible tells us the spiritual reality. And the spiritual reality is that it says the Satan entered into Judas. Uh, that that their spiritual realities bigger than our human realities. I think I think the same thing here. God's plan was ultimately for Paul to go to Rome. Because when Paul goes to Rome, he writes. So because he's going to Rome, he writes Romans, one of the greatest books in the whole Bible. Um, goes to Rome and, and in many ways 
begins the process of the church taking root in the Roman Empire, which would be the impetus to spread the church across the known world and to spread the gospel across the known world. So Paul going to Rome was going to be the best thing for the gospel. Because when Paul goes to Rome, the, the gospel begins to spread everywhere, everywhere. One of my favorite things about how the gospel spread was uh, the church sent missionaries to England or the UK uh, to convert um, the people there. And when they got there, they found they were already Christians <laughs> because there were there were Christians, the Roman legions. Uh, and when they went to England, uh, they began to convert people. So the church sent missionaries to England to convert people. And they found there were already Christians there too when they went to be there. That was the way it worked. So um, Paul is in the temple. And the, the thing that, so talking about the spiritual, the spiritual is that God wants Paul in Rome. But look at verse 29. Um, well, uh, well, verse 20, 28. Shouting, fellow Israelites, help. This is the very man who was teaching everyone everywhere against our people, our law and our place. More so than that, he actually has brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trimophius, the Ephesian, with him in the city. And they supposed that Paul had brought him to the temple. Paul had not done that. Paul had actually gone above and beyond to keep from appearing to do things that were gonna that would have been seen as wrong by the people. So contrast, contrast Paul's intent. Last passage, how under, while Paul was under no obligation to do the things that he did, he did it anyway to appear peaceful. He was trying to go to the best response. And then you see these people here, they assume the worst. They assume, well, we saw Paul with this guy. So obviously Paul brought this guy into the temple. Well, not only did Paul not bring this guy to the temple, but Paul went out of his way to avoid doing things that were going to be offensive to the Jewish people in Jerusalem. They just assumed Paul was going to do the wrong thing. They just assumed Paul was going to do the thing that violated them. They just assumed Paul was going to cause trouble. They just assumed these things when Paul was actually doing quite the opposite. I don't know how many of y'all know David French. David French is one of my favorite writers in the world today. Um, he, he, he debates with people a lot about faith and politics and things such as that. And um, one of the things I'll, I've learned from David French is always assume the best case scenario of the person or the argument you're in a debate about. So often when we're dealing with others, do we assume the worst? Don't we assume the worst sometimes? Don't we assume the worst of their intents or the worst of their motivations or the worst case of their arguments? It's easy to do. And I, I think that's one of the reasons we find ourselves, we find ourselves in our world is we just assume other people are always the problem. We assume their positions or arguments or whatever are the, are the problem. And I think that leads to a downward spiral when we assume the worst in others and assume the worst in their positions or assume the worst in their beliefs. The spiritual reality that was happening here was that the Lord wanted Paul to be in Rome. I mean, that's was going to happen. That's where this was headed. But I think the practical on the ground choices that were made was that people made the worst case assumptions in each other. And these individuals here who were stirring up trouble, they just assumed that Paul brought this Gentile into the temple. When not only did Paul not do that, but Paul went out of his way to avoid being offensive. So today when you're mad at somebody, coworker, family member, internet person. Are you going to assume the worst of them or the best of them? You don't have to agree with them. These Jewish individuals are never going to agree with Gentiles being part of the kingdom. It's okay. But they assume that's not okay. Obviously, we're Christians, so as Gentiles, we, <laughs> we, we, we're glad Paul did this. 
They assumed the worst of Paul. And they were wrong. They were wrong. Today, when you feel your anger welling up or your frustration welling up or your whatever welling up, stop and ask yourself, what's your assumption? Are you assuming the best about this individual or the worst? And if we assume the worst of someone, it's just going to spiral from there, y'all. It's just going to spiral. So today, what are our assumptions of each other? What are our assumptions of those we disagree with? What are our assumptions about the world? Today, let's um, let's assume good intent. Maybe we'll be wrong. <laughs> Maybe we'll be naive. Maybe we'll be foolish. I've gotten to a place in my life that's okay. I'm okay being naive and foolish. I want to assume the best in you, the best in everyone, because that helps me love you better. And doesn't the Bible tell us that's the greatest commandment to love God, love neighbor? So today, let's assume the best. Let's hope for the best. Let's live in the best. Let's, as Paul tells us later, whatever is pure, lovely, holy, and pure, my brothers and sisters, think on these things. So let's do that today. Okay. Thanks for being with us. We're going to begin to see Paul's defense, and we're going to see Paul defending himself a lot the next few chapters. So anyway, thanks for joining us. We'll pick up tomorrow in Acts chapter 21, verse 37. Have a great day.